a long, long time ago. If we were concerned with wedding myth and history here, we might perhaps say it was in the last century before Christ, but such dates don't concern us. In a faraway land, which likely resembled Greece, but again, its reality contains no geography. So a long, long time ago, in a faraway land, there once was an island in the middle of the sea. And on this island, there was a small village, and the village had many names, but for right now, let's call it a delta. Now, a delta was like many of the fishing villages which came before it and which came after it, simple, provincial, isolated, full of rich personalities and emotional conflict. Day-to-day -day life was full and busy, but if you zoomed out just a, just a little bit beyond the personal, you would get this eerie, peaceful sense that nothing much ever happened there. The boats went out in the morning and returned at dusk. Babies born and elders died. Lovers quarreled, even betrayed, but then they mended or else they found other, others, other lovers to love. As a whole, such personal dramas were of little consequence and a delta kept on being, well, delta. One day, just like any other day into this bustling, changeless village, stepped two gods. Or perhaps they were there all along, it's unclear. Today, we're going to call these gods Zeus and Hermes, because I have a particular love of Hermeticism, but we might as well call them Jupiter and Mercury, or Rama and Hanuman, or Yahweh and Lot. These names, they never really mattered that much. So, perhaps Zeus and Hermes were feeling of a particularly moralistic disposition, and they were trying to make some sort of godly point that day. Or, perhaps, the godly point was only invented by later storytellers, maybe Ovid, certainly not me, and the pair of gods was actually just feeling a little bit peckish, you know, they were hungry. In any case, one day Zeus and Hermes took the form of two beggars and decided that it would be a good idea to start knocking on doors and asking for some food. And, of course, as the story goes, they were not treated very kindly by most Adeltans, who failed to see the divinity invisibly growing underneath the rags. But then, they knocked on the door of Philemon and Bacchus, an elderly couple who lived at the edge of the village, on a hilltop overlooking the sea. And they were graciously welcomed inside. Their food was cheap, simple, and excellent. Tough bread with lightly fermented cottage cheese, bitter greens, weeds really, picked from the path up the hill, and wild strawberries. Oh, and, and lots and lots of homemade wine. Everything seemed quite ordinary until Bacchus noticed that although their wine was being drunk, the pitcher she was pouring it out of never seemed to empty. It reminded her a bit of a story she had once heard from a traveler about a bush which burned but was never consumed. She por pondered this, this story about the, the burning bush for a moment and then nearly dropped her pitcher as the glazed snake painted upon it slowly started to reach around and began to consume its own tail. Philemon immediately recognized what was happening. Their guests were infinite beings, obviously, and he let out a cry of joy. And he started running around the cottage in a fervor. The goose, he cried, we must sacrifice the goose. The goose, in no mood to be sacrificed, started running around the cottage in an equal fervor, squawking all the way until finally it settled on Hermes' lap. There's no need to sacrifice you today, said Hermes to the goose in goose language, which didn't sound a bit like squawking. Then, to the old couple, he said, We want to thank you for your excellent hospitality. How can we show our gratitude? Bacchus and Philemon looked at each other with dismay, baffled and humbled by this question from a god, and then their eyes locked, and after a moment of contact, they said, For as long as something of ourselves remains in this world, we would like it to remain together. The gods nodded, and then they disappeared. Hermes is the god of transformation, but in this case the transformation happened slowly. Time passed. The old couple grew even older, and eventually came the time for ending. A word which the snake and the butch uh, a word which the snake and the bush and the pitcher tell us actually means beginning. The goose eventually was sacrificed, but the couple remained. And as their cottage slowly decayed around them, the couple remained. 
And when sunlight began to pierce through the disintegrating thatch, it landed not upon ancient eyes or wrinkled skin, but green leaves and gnarled bark. And soon, through the rooftop emerged two trees, their trunks and roots completely intertwined. And to this day, these trees, not quite two, not quite one, grow quietly on the hilltop, gazing at the sea.